Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with ghost cheesecake brownies. That's right, we're using Halloween as an excuse to make some chocolate brownies topped with cheesecake. And they really did come out incredibly well. But before I show you how to make these, let me give you a warning. There are things that happen at the end of this video that are so scary, horrible, and terrifying, it could affect some of our more sensitive viewers. Or you will see things you will never, ever be able to unsee. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is prep an 8x8 baking dish by greasing it, and also, if we want, laying in a piece of parchment paper, which, as you'll see, makes it easier to get the brownies out of the pan in one piece. And once our baking dish is prepped, we can move on to the brownie recipe, which is going to start by breaking up some unsweetened chocolate into a bowl. And yes, it has to. It must be unsweetened chocolate. And the smaller you break or cut your chocolate at this point, the easier this step is going to be. Because what we're going to do next is melt a stick of butter over medium heat. And then we will pour that hot melted butter over our chocolate. And we'll let it sit for about five minutes or so until it melts and softens, enough to stir this into a very smooth, shiny mixture. And once that has been mixed up, we can set it aside and we can move on to the rest of this terrifyingly easy brownie batter, which starts with two large whole eggs, to which we will add a little touch of white sugar, at which point we'll take a whisk, or if we're feeling lazy, an electric hand mixer, and we will mix this on high speed until we have something very light and kind of a pale yellow color. Okay, so we're basically shooting for something that looks like this. And once that's been accomplished, we will stop and we will toss in a little bit of Eye of Newt. But if you can't find that, we'll just substitute with some vanilla extract. And we will also toss in a little bit of salt. And then we'll mix this on high again for about another minute. And it will become even paler and lighter and fluffier. And that's it. Once that's happened, we can stop. And we can transfer in our chocolate butter mixture. Oh, and by the way, I don't always show it in the videos. But in between shots, I always cleanly scrape out bowls and pots and pans that have stuff in them. Like the chocolate in this bowl, for example. So you folks that email me about why I don't clean those out, please relax. Otherwise, I will haunt your dreams. Just kidding. Or am I? And then once our eggs and sugar mixture have been chocolated, we'll go ahead and give that a mix for just about 30 seconds or so before we add the last ingredient, which is some all-purpose flour, which technically we're supposed to fold in with a spatula, but I'm just going to use the hand mixer on low speed, which isn't going to cause any problems since we're only going to do that for about 20 seconds or so, just until that flour almost disappears. And that's it, we will switch to a spatula and we'll scrape the remaining flour from around the sides. And that's going to be it for our chocolate brownie batter. And normally at this point, it would be ready to transfer into our baking dish. But before we do that, we're going to save a couple teaspoons of this stuff, which we will use later to make our ghost face. And that's it, once we've pulled out a couple teaspoons, we can transfer the rest into our baking dish. And once that's transferred in, we want to make sure it's distributed evenly and thoughtfully spread and pushed into the corners. And then as best we can, we will try to smooth the top and get it as flat as possible. Since as promised, we're going to top this with some cheesecake ghosts, which is the next and last component we're going to mix up. And for that, all we need is some nice soft cream cheese, to which we will add some white sugar, some vanilla extract, or if you have it, I have newt. And then last but not least, one egg white. And yes, most similar recipes call for the whole egg, but I wanted my cheesecake ghost to be as white as possible. So I'm going to save that yolk and use it as an excuse to make some pasta later. And that's it, I grabbed a whisk and gave this a mix. And yes, I grossly overestimated how soft my cream cheese was. And I really should have stopped and grabbed a spatula. But I am nothing if not stubborn. So like some kind of brain dead zombie, I just kept whisking and whisking. And eventually the mixture smoothed out. And once our cheesecake mixture is set, we can go ahead and start creating our ghosts. Ideally in the center of whatever will be a piece. And since when I use this 8x8 pan, I always cut them 3x3 three three to make 9 pieces of brownie. I'm going to go ahead and make 9 ghosts. And as I finished that ninth one, I realized I had a ton of cheesecake mixture left. So I added a little more to each ghost. And then started applying it to the sides. And in between the ghosts to use up the extra. And even after I was done, I still had a couple tablespoons of this mixture left. So when you make yours, if you want, you could probably add a couple tablespoons to the bottom of the dish before we transfer our brownie batter in. That way we'd use it all and we'd have a little extra cheesecake element at the bottom. 
And after that was done, I went ahead and took my spoon and attempted to make my nine piles of cheesecake mixture into nine things that sort of look like ghosts, which was a little challenging because I didn't want everything smeared together. And in fairness, nobody really knows what a ghost looks like. But anyway, I did my best, first with a spoon and then with a bamboo skewer. And after I had done the bodies, I went ahead and did those spots in between. And by the way, this portion of the video is dedicated to all those ghost hunting shows on TV, which in the last 20 years I've been watching them, have found exactly, hold on, let me check my numbers, exactly zero ghosts. Although based on some of the noises they're hearing, they're getting really, really close. But anyway, once I got tired of spooning and scaring, I went ahead and transferred that reserve brownie batter into a small plastic bag, and then snipped off the tip so I could use that to pipe the eyes and mouth and give these things that signature terrifying ghost face look. Except I did it again. Just like when we did those ice cream sandwiches, my ghost faces actually look more like bird faces. Note to self, five years from now do the exact same video, except call it albino bird brownies. But anyway, I went ahead and piped out all those faces. And yes, I did have a little bit of extra batter left over, which I just squirted straight into my mouth. And once I was done, I went ahead and grabbed a skewer, and did a little bit of fine tuning. And by little bit, I mean about 15 minutes. But anyway, how much detail you try to get into these is gonna be up to you. I mean, you are after all the Mike Myers of Cheesecake Ghost modifiers. But like most recipes similar to this, once these are baked, most of this fine tuning will not be noticeable anyway. So why do we do it? Human nature. Oh yeah, that's what separates us from the ghosts. And that's it, once we're happy with our design, this is ready to transfer into the center of a 350 degree coven, sorry, a 350 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes or until it looks like this. And as far as doneness goes, some recipes are easy to test with a toothpick or skewer, but fudgy brownies are not one of them. Okay, it might come out a little bit clean towards the outside, but in the center, it's gonna come out coated with chocolate. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to sort of rely on the time. And then at this point, we must, we have to, let these brownies cool all the way down before we try to move them or cut them or eat them. And that's exactly what I did not do. Okay, I only let mine sit about 10 or 15 minutes before using the parchment to pull them out of the pan and transfer them onto this plate. And that would have been fine had I just waited for these to cool all the way down. But as if I was possessed by some kind of evil spirit, I decided to try to remove the parchment and take some pictures since I thought the late afternoon light was gorgeous, it would make these look even more beautiful. And you know when you're watching a horror movie and they start playing that scary music, so you know someone's just about to be eaten, or torn into pieces, or torn into pieces and then eaten. Well, if this was a horror movie, and it kinda is, that music would be playing right now. Since I tried to pull out the parchment and this was way too hot, and this all cracked apart and got torn open, and it was basically a nightmare on Lame Street. But anyway, I'm sorry you had to see all that, and I apologize in advance for any nightmares it causes. But all's well that ends well, and this ended very well. And if your brownie breaks apart because it's too hot, that means it's still hot enough to push all back together. So that's what I did, and I cleaned up the sides, and then I took some pictures like that never even happened. And then after that, I did let these cool down properly. Almost before grabbing a knife and cutting out a piece. And as terrible as I thought I had done those ghost designs, they really did not look that bad. All right, I don't know if they were scary good, but they were pretty good. And by the way, what kind of psychopath gets handed a brownie with a ghost face cheesecake on it and then complains about the design? That's right, the kind that does not get invited to any more Halloween parties. And as much as I like our original pure brownie recipe, which this is based on, having that cheesecake element on top really is nice since I'm a cheesecake fanatic. So appearances aside, I really did enjoy these very much. But since these were an experiment, we will do a little analysis now that we're at the end of the video. A post-mortem, if you will. And as far as the actual recipe, I wouldn't change anything. But like I said, we had a little more cheesecake than we needed for the top. So I'd probably swirl about two tablespoons into half the brownie mixture, and then top it with the rest of the brownie batter. And then use the remaining to make your ghosts on top as shown. And then besides that, maybe we can make the ghosts a little better looking. Maybe do smaller eyes and a smaller mouth so they don't look quite as avian. And then last and certainly not least, 
The most important thing to stress is let your brownies cool before you try to move them or cut them or do anything with them. All right, trying to pull that parchment paper off just because I wanted a picture in the nice light was not smart. And I'm not sure what got into me. But whatever it is, I hope this exorcist I hired can get it out of me. Anyway, the point is let your brownies cool. Since once they were, the texture and taste were amazing. And whether you make these for a Halloween party, you know, for the kids, allegedly. Or they finally prove the existence of ghosts on one of those shows and you want to celebrate. No matter your reason, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.